If you have your Bibles with you, you can be turning to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 7. Uh, and while you're turning there, I uh, always covet your prayers as your pastor. And the older I get, the more I realize I'm just dependent on that. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, and we're going to begin reading uh, in verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 7, uh, beginning in verse 17. The Bible says, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the families kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make the cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings into the gods that, th that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your father, for spake, for I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifice or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people, and ye shall walk, and ye shall walk. It ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that I may be, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. We thank you and praise you for a church to meet uh, with your people. We thank you and praise you for the good building that you've given us out of the cold that we might meet uh, to glorify your name. God, we pray this morning that you would be lifted up. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, maybe some not so familiar verses of scripture. Uh, Jeremiah addressing the nation of Israel and listing their problems. Uh, you know, uh, what I found with people were fine, about, were fine about listing problems until it starts listening, uh, listing our own. And then there might be an issue. Now, Jeremiah lived in the day uh, just before captivity, and he warned and warned and warned that problems were coming that the nation of Israel had sinned greatly against God and there would be a result to that sin. Now, the United States have sinned greatly against God and now there's, there's something to be paid back. Uh, I, I fully believe that there'll be here under the sound of my voice, you younger ones, that really probably will not know the America that I grew up on, it, even if it exists at all. Our, our freedoms will be, uh, will be limited in the name of money and food. And the very same thing, and that, that seems like kind of a dim uh, thing to warn somebody of, but Israel was saying, I mean, Jeremiah was saying, judgment is coming, Israel. Listen, the problem is, the, the problem is you, and no one would listen. Now go back to our text in verse 17. Uh, I want you to see that Jeremiah says, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Do, do you see it? Do you not perceive it? Now, the general answer was this, no. They did not see it. You, you look all about us and, and, and you, you have, uh, you, we live in a day where it's a common thing for a man and a man to marry. Do they see it? No. Uh, they, they, they don't see it. Judgment had already started down at the house of God and he says, don't you see it? 
No, they certainly do not. Uh, and they don't see it today. The things that the Bible clearly cuts as sin is not seen. And if, if anything, they're validated and celebrated. That, that, that's, where we're, that's where we're at today. So as Jeremiah begins his, this portion of his prophecy, he says, do you not see it? And the answer is no. Uh, verse 18, the children gather wood. Now, I think it's very interesting as he's getting into this section on idolatry that the children are included. We need to be very careful what we have our children involved in. We need to be very cautious what we invite them to do. Now, Adam can attest to this, and Sarah too. If I, was, if I had a project at home, I would pull my children into it. Now, we never did anything crazy like that, but I was trying to teach my boys how to work. We teach our children something every day. And they were, they were in the very beginning stages helping to gather wood for these, soft, uh, these false altars even at, even at the beginning. You know what? What we ought to do and what we ought to have in the lives of our children is this. Bring them down to the house of God and this comes first. This is the first thing that happens. It's the last thing that ends. This is what's important in your life. See, they learn that from a very young age. And so these idolatrous children were very learning very young as well. The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women need their dough. Now, I also want you to see uh, something that's very interesting. A lot of these elements that they're using is Jewish elements. It's, it's in fact elements that were used in daily sacrifices. It, it, was, it, it was things that would later even be used in the Lord's table. For me, look, look what they have. They have, they, they have the dough that they were needing. Uh, re remember when the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper on the evening of the last Passover? And what did he use? Bread. Bread, wine. And we find here even the very same thing. You know what a lot of people are teaching their children is religion. Mm -hmm. They're not teaching them about Christ, right. but they are teaching them religion. You know what religion will do for you? It will send your soul to hell. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and so we see then that as uh, Jeremiah is teaching them, he gives us some good parental advice and that is to uh, don't include your children in things like this. The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, the women need the dough to make cakes to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Now, uh, there's always been uh, an idolatrous woman predicted as if though she's queen of the earth. Mother Nature is the most recent one uh, people still occasionally uh, uh, talk about. Uh, listen, this earth is not a god in any way, what shape, form, or fashion. This earth is not to be worshipped in any way at all. It speaks of the goodness of God, but it is still His creation. And so we find... What they're doing is having a family worship time for a false god. Right. Man, there's a lot of it going on right now as we speak, is it not? Mm -hmm. uh, I was watching uh, Facebook last night. And over and over and over and over again, they, they, were, they were taking those gifts and putting them below the tree. Look what... Jeremiah chapter 10, the first four verses. Read that tonight as your home Bible study. It is specifically written in the Word of God. Why did they not know it? Well, the very same reason these people did not know it. Their eyes were blinded. And so we find then, as Jeremiah is writing, he points out specifically the idolatrous things they are doing the rest of verse 18, and to pour out their drink offerings unto other gods, and they provoked me, and they provoke me to anger. Now, I want you to see also, 
and, and Jarrett hit on a lot of the characteristics of God that people don't like in his Sunday school time. And here we find it again, Brother Jarrett, God has an anger. You just remember that when, when we think of his beauty and his holiness, don't forget his anger. Uh, in fact, if I understand uh, the character of God, there, there's no quenching his anger. Even after the redeemed are at home with the earth, hell is going to be, the lake of fire is fueled by the full wrath of God. Still poured out on sinners, still poured, uh, poured out on people that refuse, uh, uh, that, that, do not, uh, that do not recognize God for whom he is. Verse 19, do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Now, we live in a very confusing world, do we not? You know what? Have you ever been in a Catholic church, a building? I have. When we were in Mexico, I went to more than one. And, and you remember, uh, I'm trying to think, was it, uh, it may have been Jeremiah, but he, uh, he, he, he uh, the prophecy talked about him being wooed. No, it was in Revelation, being just wooed by what was around him. Remember the great whore? He, he, he was taken aback by how she looked. Listen, those buildings are unbelievable structures. Costly, unbelievable structures. And that's what most people equate to religion. When they see the pictures of Mary and of Jesus, they equate that. See, this, even in the day of Jerusalem, was creeping in. They were doing it to false gods, and they didn't even know it. They didn't even know it. And, and, and so, uh, I think, fearfully, we often do the same thing, and if, the, if Satan can give you a counterfeit belief, he certainly, he certainly will do that. Verse 20, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, meaning Jerusalem, meaning Israel. Now, isn't it a glorious thing that God's fury is just as specific as His grace? Have you ever wondered and just stand marveled that how, how God can place His grace and regenerate uh, a person the way He does and everybody around Him just living like dogs on slop? It's because it, it, it's specific. But thanks be to God, His wrath is the same way. Remember, remember the night uh, of the death of the firstborn uh, in the judgment of Israel? They had that blood on the post of their doors. And those that are on the inside were safe. Remember the, the darkness that could be felt? <laughs> Down in the land of Goshen, everything was fine. They had bright, wonderful light like we have this morning. See, God's judgment has always been specific, and it always will be. It, it's, reserved for, uh, it's reserved for the lost. It's reserved for the vessels of wrath. It belongs to them. And so he says, then in the rest, and the, upon the beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and I shall burn, and it shall not be quenched. Now, I want you to see also that the, the rebellion of the people caused judgment on the nation. The rebellion of the individuals that lived there brought drought. The re rebellion of the people that live there uh, caused the stock, the, the cows, the horses, and all that around them, it caused them to die. Have you ever thought about how your sin is impacting others? That's right. Yeah. It is. I guarantee you that. I don't know how it's impacting others too, but it certainly is. And mine is too. And, and we as the Lord's people, we certainly need to, you know, it's just being considerate to think about what how you do impacting others. You know why uh, most people don't do that today? Because they're not considered. They care less about other people. That, 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 that's where we've arrived in 2022. It's, uh, you know what? 
Compared to the years I grew up in the 70s, it's a different place. Compassion's gone. Uh, uh, I, re I remember when, uh, when I think it was when Dottie Dot died, uh, and Sarah, our uh, daughter-in-law, called and said, where do we bring the food? And uh, I was like, and, and, you know, we do that too, but apparently it's uh, ASAP in southern Georgia because she was ready to get a test row over to Diane as quickly as she could get it up there. And you know what? That happened all the time when I was a boy. I remember when my grandmother died, literally not being any more room for me to put people to bring it to the door. Mother would be, be out with Macon or somewhere going to the funeral home, and I had ran out of places to stick food. Those days are gone. They really are. And the very same way, sin escalates to the point where there's no compassion left. No. You, you, you know why uh, people can, for no reason, just, you know, the, these crazy people, with, you know, just when traffic is so bad, getting so angry just about traffic, yeah. getting out of the car and blowing somebody's head off. That's where we're at. And so we see all of this <laughs> occurs because sin is so rapid and sin is allowed from letting these things begin in our very own homes. <laughs> Verse 21, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your, unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. Now what verse 21 is saying, don't waste your time. Uh, you know, they were still going through a measure of worship. They were still going down to the temple. They were still going through the routine sacrifices, but it meant nothing, and God did not recognize it. That's, unfortunately, I believe in 2022, many of the Lord's churches has come to this point. They're just not, <laughs> what they're doing is not being recognized. And you see the other side going just seemingly, you know, building buildings as big as Walmart. And you know why? Don't get discouraged, friends. They're like the Jews were in this day. They're worshiping other gods. Now, they wouldn't tell you that. Oh, yeah, we're worshiping, you know, uh, Balaam. But they are. You know, if you don't know the God of the Bible, you don't know how to worship. And you will end up with something like that. You, you, you will end up with that crazy stuff because you don't know the God of the Bible. So he tells them, Jeremiah tells the people, just stop what you're doing. Verse 22, For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the land of Egypt concerning offerings or sacrifices. He gave that to Moses. But this thing commanded I them, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. That easy, that simple, obey God. Now, when I say easy and simple, that's the message. Difficult and hard is following, following through with it. Mm -hmm. Or it is for me. <laughs> I don't think I'm much different than anybody else here this morning. But he says, I, I don't want your cows. I don't want the red kind. I don't want, I, I don't want your first fruits. I want you to obey me. That's a... That's a... Seems very simplistic, but it's very hard. Now, obedience is worth far more than the greatest amount of money that you could bring down to the Lord's house. Obedience, following what He would have you to do. That, that is critical in the, in the life of someone who intends on serving the Lord. Then He says, but this, uh, but this thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, 
and it will be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart. Now, everybody, uh, sound uh, of my voice knows I have a pretty significant hearing problem. And my family especially know if I do this, I didn't get the message. Or I only got a portion of it. You know, what we need to do is realize that, you remember the, the Lord said, he that have an ear, let him hear the churches of the, the, church, the seven churches of Asia. Y'all remember that? And I have ears, but they don't hear. And so my family know if I, if I, need, the, if I need another message, to, I do this. You know what? I'd rather do it. You know what? It's, it's embarrassing. Um, Sarah and I, two occasions recently, um, and Bella, we went to Zaxby's. That's my favorite place to eat, a fast food line anyway. And we went to Zaxby's, and to me, the girl just mumbled. And I looked at Sarah, and Sarah had to do our ordering because I couldn't understand what the girl was saying. And uh, we need to do more of it. Why, why would I do something if I couldn't hear? Now, I could have said, you know, shook my head like a dumb person and no telling what I got off that grill, right? I, I, I want to understand. I, I want to know. So I'm willing to do this. Is it embarrassing to have a hearing deficit? You betcha. But I'd a whole lot rather know what's being said than pretend I do. You see what I'm saying? And, and spiritually, it's the very same thing. I would a whole lot another say, rather say, Lord, uh, I need you. I didn't understand that. I didn't quite get it than to go on what I thought he said. Mm -hmm. and, and so we see then as the Lord's people that we, we need to be more like that, but they would not. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsel and the imaginations of their evil heart. That's us. You, you know what an imagination is? Hmm. Making God less than you. That, that's an imagination that mankind has always had. Uh, his law is not that good. Them two trees is just as good to eat out of as any other in this garden. That's an imagination. And they went with it. And all of humanity was damned under them. Imagination of your own heart is like, I'm going to worship the Lord any way I want to. I can worship Him just as good out on Lake Barclay as I can in the house of God. That's an evil imagination of your own heart. It is not true. You see what I'm saying? And the entire nation was feeding on that stuff. They, they believed it wholeheartedly. And, and the result was pure detriment. Israel did fall. He says you're going to fall, and he did. But notice the last, last of that. The imagination of their heart and went backward and not forward. Now, this morning, what is your heart's desire? Do you want to go backward in 2023? Or do you want to go forward? I believe it's not robbing God of his sovereignty to say, I want to go forward in 2023. I want to be more effective than I was in 2022. I want to go forward. And these people apparently didn't. But you know what? It's very hard for me to find a Christian that says, oh man, uh, I want to go backward. I, I'd love to start drinking again and, and, and running around on my wife. That, that's my desire. No, you don't ever hear any of that, right? But I've heard, I've seen a whole lot that stand still. They don't even do either one of them. What does what the Bible and the church letters say to Laodicea. He said, you're lukewarm and I will spew thee out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. See, he can work with someone that's cold, can't he? Now, it may not be pleasant. He may send you a good whipping. But he can work with someone that's cold. 
What did they have said? They said, we are, we are good. We are increased with goods. They, they had a big bank account down at Laodicea and didn't even recognize their cold and impotent heart that was non repentive So what about you? What, which direction do you want to move in, in, in 2023? Do you want to be closer to the Lord? See, I want to move forward. I want to be more effective because, and I know kind of give you the hummy drummies explaining the days that we live in, but listen, that's why the Lord always said, you're pilgrims and strangers. We do not have to let all that mess that's going on out there impact our progression toward the Lord. But how often we do, do we not? And then we blame God for it. God help us. You know why it was negative four the other day and on the other side of the river, river negative five? You know why that happened? Was it to slow God's people down? No, it happened because God wanted to. He, he determined that that would be so, and he measured your response. Right? What's going to happen? I don't know. I don't see unless God intervenes completely, Biden do anything different, do you? That doesn't impact me. What impacts me is what I do. You see what I'm saying? I've determined within myself that 2023, I want to be more effective. I want to move forward in the things of God. And there's not one thing here that will hamper me from that but myself. I, I want to move forward in the day in which we live. Now, very quickly, uh, I'll give you some examples of what we can move forward with. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, very familiar verses of Scripture. Some people uh, call it uh, the Beatitudes. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, and we'll begin reading in verse 14. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, the Bible says, Ye, speaking of the apostles at that time, the first portion of the church, I have placed some in the church, first apostles, 1 Corinthians 10. Ye, uh, so we see, ye are the light of the world. Has our position as a New Testament church changed in 2022? Absolutely not. We are still the light of the world. The filthy blackness that surrounds us, surrounds us, we're the light. We're, we're the only thing that can, that can impact that in any way. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is uh, set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine, shine as the lighted candle before men. Now that is 2023. That is moving forward. Think about your own life, and I, I don't know, and you don't know about me, really. How has your light been muted, set back, covered up in 2023, or 2022? I believe any of us, if we were honest, could say, you know what? I let that person get in my way. I let what he said make me angry. It muted your life. It put a shadow about it. And you weren't brightest before. But can we be? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, don't, don't write off the sovereign God of heaven that things have changed so much that we no longer can be happy and we no longer can be effective in ministry because that's a lie right out of the pits of hell. Gospel of Luke chapter 5. We find uh, a couple of events that, that occurred in the lives of some people. Gospel of Luke chapter 5 and verse 25. Luke 5 and verse 25. Now, this is of the man that was sick of the palsy. He could not walk. He could not do, do around. 
he could not provide for himself because of the palsy. Now, all you know, our, our, our son Joseph, you know, this, this is you. You, you want to think about some humbling times, and y'all know, y'all see me uh, get assist Joey up and uh, and get him down the basement steps, and then you see my wife feeding him. You know what would happen to Joey if we didn't do that? He'd sit right there and starve to death. Right. That's you. <laughs> if it weren't for the goodness of God, that is you. So we find this man sick of a physical palsy that could not walk, that could not move, that could not uh, provide for himself. And God cleanses him completely, lifts him up, and says he went out of the building shouting. Rolled up that old bed he laid on for some for years and began shouting and praising to the Lord. You know what? You can do that in 2023. You know, it's a shame and a disgrace when the redeemed act on the man and see the deposit. Just sitting there, not doing nothing for the glory of God, not doing nothing to lift up His holy name, and just sitting there and literally doing nothing. And we see the lame man got up and glorified God. You know what I want to do better in 2023 is learn how to glorify God. You know, uh, Jared and I have talked about this many times. There's no outline in the Scripture about how church services should be set up. Did you know that? There's literally nothing in there about it. One thing we know, we're to sing and we're to preach. That's it. We, we, we don't know. There's not even any biblical line on how that even should happen. Now what we do is fine. It's very structured. A lot of what we do come from Pennington's church manual. He was a Southern Baptist man from Nashville, Tennessee. And a lot, uh, a lot, of, a lot of what we do is, is based on that. And wasn't nothing wrong. I believe Pennington was regenerated from, uh, from reading his own testimony. But I'm just saying, I want to worship, I want to worship him more. I want to lift up his name. 2023 should not be a, a year where we sit on our backsides and do nothing for the cause of Christ. Worship is integral. Gospel Luke chapter 25. Now, uh, we see the lame man being made to walk. And Luke was a physician, by the way, and I... I think that's why I connect to this gospel so much because when I see illness relieved, it, it, it resonates with me as a nurse. The gospel of Luke chapter 18 and verse 43, the Bible says, and immediately, and this, this was the blind man, remember the little salve that the Lord created from spittle and, and rubbed it on his eyes? It's this one. And he said, immediately he received sight and glorified God. Uh, you know what? When you see when you see any situation from a spiritual context, you will glorify God. He's the master of the wind. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Glorify God. Now, sometimes that's rough. And the reason it's rough, we forget who's in the who, who's in the driving seat. Do we That's not? Right. Mm -hmm. Satan's not in the driving seat. I wished uh, the Andersons could have seen their place a year ago. And uh, at first, you know, it was <laughs> it was just unreal. It really was. That's only. But you know what? That tornado. The hand of the Almighty had it all the time. Their house here, house right to them, completely destroyed. That's the master of the wind. Mm -hmm. That's a reason to glorify God. That's a reason to lift up His name. I'm going to find a way in 2023, and I don't know what 2023 has got in store for you, but at the most difficult time in it, remember God is control, in control. Give Him great glory. Any way that you can find it, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, very simple way on a daily basis. 
Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20. Now, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, Corinth had a really, really bad problem through the whole group. They were heathen people. They were just like us. They, they were Gentiles. They had a bend towards sin. They did not know the law of God. And in chapter 3, we have a man running with his stepmama. Well, what did the Lord say about that? He said, when you come, when you come together again, get rid of him. He, he's a hindrance. He's a problem to you. And so, uh, in uh, 6 here, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 20, on the very same line of thought, he reminds them, for ye are bought with a price. What was the price of your redemption? It is the blood of the very living Son of God. What could you possibly hold back for the man that gave his life's blood for you? But we do hold back, do we not? Yeah. We don't give it 110%. Remember, that was Paul's desire too. He compared it to running a race, remember? Mm -hmm. And he, 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 he says, run like you've not obtained the price. Now, he says, you've won it already, but run like you had to run it. Run like you want to be the winner. That's what we ought to do in 2023 is to run like we've never run before. Make yourself ready. Put yourself to the task at hand. <laughs> and he says, for ye are bought with a price, the shed blood of Christ, therefore, or because he died for you, glorify God in your body. That's this. Yeah. That's why you don't drink like a fish. That's why you don't run around naked. That's why I don't let my hair grow out to my shoulders. It's because I'm a man and I'm not a woman. All kind of different ways that you can look at that. That's why you use the gifts you have. And if you have a gift of voice, use it to the praise of God. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Now notice that little, that spirit there is not capital S spirit like the Holy Spirit of God. It's little s spirit. It means how we present. Have you ever met someone and you knew just from the moment you saw them, oh, we got trouble? No. I've always wondered why Yankees want to move down here and tell us what we're doing wrong, right? That's a... That's a foul spirit, right? You, do you ever produce that yourself? It don't mean you're lost. It means your presentation is lousy. It means you present like you think you know more than everybody else. It means you present like you could care less about their eternal soul. Mm. That, that, that's what Paul was writing. So in this thing you can see, and then in this thing that you can't see, be kind. You know what? Just because they are not five pointers like you, have compassion. Extend love to them. Tell them you're concerned about them. Take them a pecan pie. Right? Be loving. Be loving. And so as Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, he gives them some very simplistic ways to glorify God. Now, the other thing, or one of the many things we are to do in addition to glorifying God in 2023 is to spread the gospel. Gospel of Matthew chapter uh, 28. Now, all four of the Gospels is just a, a historic recording of the Lord Jesus Christ's personal ministry. Matthew uh, 28, we're going to begin reading in verse 16. Matthew 28 and verse 16. Now, if you remember where we're at, the very end of Christ's ministry, and they've gone out to the mount, and he commissions the church. Now, 
I do not believe whatsoever that the gospel was given to these individual men because what does mankind do with things they get? We always corrupt them, right? We always make them into something that in fact they're not. He was commissioning the church. The church is a spiritual entity just like Christ. The church is a, a spiritual thing and, and, and the, the, spirit, the spirituality of the church was trustworthy. It could protect the gospel because it, it, it was not human. It did not have human corruptibility. So he was giving the gospel to his church, to his bride, to someone who could be trusted with it. Right? And so as they're standing there around him, he began to tell them some stuff he wanted them to do. When the 11, Judas is now dead, when the eleven disciples went unto Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. So this was a very planned meeting. Did he do it in his earthly ministry or did he do it during those meeting times where he came with them after the resurrection? I don't know. But it was an appointed place. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Now, were these, was these doubters lost people? I don't know. I'm saved and I've doubted a lot of times. Have you not? Uh, I, I've doubted in the ability of God. Have you not? I, I, I've, I've doubted in the ability of the usefulness of a church with a handful of people. Have you not? Am I, am I the only one that does that? Sure you've done it. Some doubt it. These people weren't lost people. They were good, sound members of Jerusalem Baptist Church. But the things of this world caused them to doubt. Now, until when they saw Christ, they doubted. And uh, listen, one thing I intend with the Lord's help in, in 2023 is to get rid of my doubt. Get rid of what's hindering me. Verse 18, And Jesus spake unto them, saying, all power or authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What a powerful, wonderful statement. Listen, he's running both kingdoms. He, he, he's in the authority of the earth and the glory and the authority of heaven. He says, every bit of it now belongs to me because I am resurrected over this place. I defeated sin. I defeated death. And now, now I control both kingdoms. And he says, I'm going to give you some of this authority, this power, or this authority that was given to me. And this is when he begins to mete it out. Go. We are not to sit still. You know why I'm poor? I think mission support is important? It helps me accomplish this. It, it helps me say, uh, Maybe one more person will hear of the goodness of Christ. That, that, that's why that's important to me. Why, why do I want to do that at, church, at, at work? Because it said go. I want to participate in that. I want to be part of it. Go ye therefore teach all nations. Now, the problem with this very frequently is that we all think that everybody speaks Southern English. But they don't. Some of the greatest missionaries that have ever been. First missionary, I think it was to the Philippine Islands. Not sure about that. When I say that, the island sounds wrong. He went there not knowing one word they spoke. It was not a defeated colony like the Spaniards. And he would pick up a rock and point at the rock and do like this. And, and they would tell them what their word for rock was. And that's how he learned to spread the gospel. You know what? That takes a long, long time. Mm -hmm. When you don't even know what it represents. And so we find when he says teach, it seems easy. But it's very, very hard. It can be very, very difficult. All power is given unto me in heaven. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, bapti baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so we see in 20, 23, I believe we can more, be more dedicated to the gospel, don't you? Uh, don't go back. Move forward. Don't, don't let the, the strives that this life has to offer, don't let illness bring you even further back. Do you believe the gospel? Don't you think the very essence of being missionary-minded is the very fact, do you really believe the gospel yourself? If I had, <laughs> this always makes sense because we're so corrupt, but if I had a, a well that give out a million dollars, I'd tell y'all everyone about it because I knew you'd tithe on it. Uh, we have something so much more richer than that, do we not? I think it goes way beyond this filthy, stinking flesh and saves the inner man from everlasting to everlasting. That's the most precious jewel, and we should be sharing it. Sure. Yeah.